All right, gang, I am off to go see uh, matinee this afternoon. Gonna go check out Mike and Dave need wedding dates. And of course, it co-stars Zac Efron. Yes, the Efron. It contains a premise I'm kind of questioning. Basically, Zac Efron plays one of two brothers that is desperately trying to find and secure a date with a woman to a wedding. That's right, this guy. All right, rub it in, rub it in. Jesus, Whew. oh my God, God really? bless you. get it all over. Yeah, I'm sorry, I gotta call bullshit. Dude, this is bullshit. This movie sounds like pure science fiction. All right, so I just got out of, uh, oh, what the hell is that movie called again? <laughs> of course I'm being sarcastic. And you know what? I think I'm gonna need to take some serious time to really thoughtfully contemplate all of this film's inherent mysteries and meanings. Yeah. Okay, I'm done. This movie is absolute horseshit. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. Oh, God. <laughs> I've never seen a comedy so wrong-headed in such an awfully long time. I thought I wouldn't see a worse comedy than Dirty Grandpa this year, which ironically enough also stars Zac Efron. But I got to tell you, this movie, what the hell is it called again? <laughs> really comes close to uh, taking that dubious wall of shame honor away from that piece of crap that I saw earlier this year. So for those that are not familiar with this movie and as completely inexplicable as it seems, Mike and Dave Need Wedding Dates is based on a true story. This might be the very first film I've ever seen that says inspired by the lives of these two guys that to be honest, I don't even remember their names. But you know what? I did a smidgen of research on them. Apparently, these were two real hedonistic party animal guys whose parents basically forced them to bring respectable dates um, to an upcoming family event. So they went on Craigslist and advertised themselves. This movie is an adaptation, I guess, of their lives. Uh, if I was these guys, I would be frankly mortified and embarrassed that this movie is trying to, in some way, shape, or form, reflect what they actually happened to them. So basically, Zac Efron and Adam Devine play these two brothers, and they're just hapless man-child losers. They cause havoc wherever they fucking go. And their parents have basically are at their wits end because these two brothers have really ruined just one family event after another. And so they give them an ultimatum and they say, listen, you have to bring respectable dates to your little sister's wedding or else you're just not gonna come. And of course, they don't take the news very well. So they decide to go on a local talk show to advertise themselves and let them let everyone out there know we need dates. We're going to Hawaii. This will this will get you a free trip to Hawaii, and you get to come to a cool wedding ceremony. And so, two women, Aubrey Plaza and oh my goodness, I can't I can't think of her name right now. Dates for their sister's wedding. Anna Kendrick, uh, who may be more deplorable <laughs> than the Adam Devine and uh, Zac Efron characters. Uh, jump at the opportunity to get a free trip to Hawaii. So they pose as nice girls, hook up with Efron and Divine's characters. They go to Hawaii and comic hijinks ensue. Or do they? 
I have no idea where to begin with this comedy. Okay, first things first, this movie confuses volume with comedy. And what I mean by that is there are so many comedies these days, modern big screen comedies that are so horrendously over caffeinated, way too much for their own good. Why do so many characters in this film like scream and bellow their lines? Don't rile each other up. We never get riled up. Ah! I saved your life. She's okay. okay. I saved your life. Yeah. Oh my gosh, she's Superman. Your turn, Mark. Don't ever do that. I could do anything that they could do. <laughs> It doesn't make the already insipid dialogue funnier. It just makes it feel that much more desperate. Adam Devine is probably the most guilty culprit of the lot. I don't think he gives one truly fine and nuanced line reading in this entire movie. It, rile each other up. it is a teeth gratingly annoying performance that is so madcap and so all over the map and broad I just I, I just had a hard time stomaching it after a while Zac Efron he certainly doesn't deserve a special jury prize for subtlety in this film either and Zac Efron is really he makes for a peculiar case study because he ha I think he is an actor with really decent comedic chops. For every Neighbors, there's a film like That, Awkward, that Awkward Moment or Dirty Grandpa, and you're just kind of wondering, like, where was the guy with the assured comedic chops from Neighbors? Like, it's just, and it's kind of embarrassing. Like, him and Divine, they sort of act like they're eight-year-old children trapped in adult bodies. And Aubrey Plaza and Anna Kendrick, they are so, limitlessly likable as actresses in so many ways. Um, Anna Kendrick has been superb in so many past films. Uh, Aubrey Plaza, I mean, if you look at films like uh, Safety Not Guaranteed, and I think, what was that one, the to-do to list? She's capable of being in these semi-raunchy or full-on raunchy films, but at least, you know, plausibly inhabit a believable character. I think I'm almost more angry at Aubrey Plaza and Anna Kendrick for being in this witless and pure all comedy. Aubrey Plaza has so much potential as a strong, both dramatic and comedic actress. I think she can occupy both hemispheres, but mind how I'm doing it. But she's really being typecast recently in these really vulgar and tasteless roles that I just, oh, I think it really does her a disservice. And Anna Kendrick really really is above this type of material. She has no business being within a thousand yards of this film. None of these characters in this movie feel even human. <laughs> They're basically cardboard cutout props. Oh no. Oh God. They, like, they don't have any definable characteristic that would make us think that they occupy some sort of earthbound logic and reality. You know, I, I'm not a prude. <laughs> I'm not a prude, but I'm also not a dummy. And I know how broad farcical comedies work, okay? They, yes, they are over the top. Yes, they do go for broke. And they're zany and they're capricious, and I understand all of that. But, you know, farcical comedies work when they have really endearing and likable and believable characters at the helm. You can look as far back as like There's Something About Mary, which was an incredibly crude farcical comedy for its time and earned its R rating. But at the heart of it all, the character of Ted played by Ben Stiller, he was such an authentic presence in that film and you felt legitimately sorry for him because he was just a sweet, nice guy that inadvertently got involved in a lot of shit. Adam Devine's character and Zac Efron's character, you don't sympathize with them at all. You don't care about them. They are cartoon characters in this film. They just don't feel believable at all. And why do they scream so much in the film? Why do they yell every line of dialogue? I mean, there's a scene involving two characters taking ecstasy, which is supposed to be funny, yet it feels like the entire cast of this film took bloody ecstasy during every shot of the film that was produced. <sighs> Comedies are really hard to judge. Um, 
because comedy is is so subjective. What one person finds funny, another person won't. I mean, I mean, arguably, you could say the same thing about film criticism in general. It's a subjective, uh, written art form. Uh, objectivity has really nothing to do with it. When all said and done, is comedies are engine designed to generate consistent laughs. Does this film generate consistent laughs? No. Is it even modestly funny? No. And on those levels, this movie is. It's a failure. It's a jaw-dropping failure, and I'm pretty sure I hated it. And I'm being brutally honest. This movie is simply, and again, I'm gonna use the term, it's too hyper-caffeinated for its own good. It has no understanding of modulation. And you know, probably worst of all is, outside of the fact that the film is just too overwrought for its own good. It just mechanically goes from point A to B to C with such predictability. It doesn't take bloody Nostradamus to see where this movie is going to go. It, you know, it, it, it's a film that really feels like it's pushing the envelope. It's not pushing any goddamn envelope at all. It's just go completely going through the motions. It is on pure autopilot. But I legitimately was checking my watch a lot while watching Mike and Dave Need Wedding Days. You know, it's also telling when you start noticing editorial gaffes and continuity errors in scenes, especially in a comedy. There's a, there's a bunch of scenes in this movie where you're watching the characters and you're so bloody annoyed by all the verbal diarrhea that's coming out of their mouths that you notice, wait, wait, there was an extra in the last shot and then it cut away and then it cut back to that shot and that extra is gone. And I'm like, why am I noticing these things in this movie? I shouldn't be noticing these things. I should be paying attention to the characters and their plight. And I'm not, I just simply didn't care. I didn't care so much that I was focusing on all the other filmmaking mistakes that were going on behind the scenes. And that's the kiss of death for any comedy. It's really shameful. I like this cast. I like Aubrey Plaza. I like Anna Kendrick. I like Zac, Zac Efron. The perpetually shirtless Zac Efron. I think he's got talent. All right, rubbing in, rubbing in. Jesus. Whew. Oh my God. Adam Devine. After seeing his work in this film, I don't know if I ever want to see another film with him ever again. Imagine Ace Ventura, but cranked up to a level 11, and that's how you get to Adam Devine's performance in this film. Do not go in there. Woo! No, I don't. I don't even want to talk about this movie anymore. It's. I mean, I saw it for free, so I'm not going to complain that it took twelve dollars out of my pocket. But I think you should avoid this film, and that's it. <laughs> anyway, let me know in the comments below what you thought of. Let me know whether you liked the comedy, whether you hated it, and please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel and. I'll see you at the movies, everybody. That is all. Carry on.